Hey, how it's going? <laughs> hey, how's it going? It's Jim. And uh, today we're going to do my detailed review on the Unagi V Model 1 E500 dual motor version. Sitting over here behind me. And this is uh, retails for $990. I did my first look unboxing on it and now I'm going to go through the detail. I did multiple range tests, acceleration tests, and we're going to spend a lot of time riding this thing, showing you all the things I do like and don't like. To date, I got a little over 50 miles on it. So I've ridden it a good amount, got a good feel for it. So just some of the general specs on this scooter. Uh, I measured it a little over 28 pounds. The manufacturer had 26 pounds. Um, full sets of dimensions will be on the, in the description with timestamps down below. And, and, and also a little summary of my test results. So you can see here just the, the sleekness of the of the scooter. Uh, the one thing you will notice here right away is one, the deck kind of looks looks larger than it might be. I'm going to put my size 10 shoes on here and you can see when using the scooter you kind of have to do something like that at least at my foot size. Um, so there's not a lot of room. It's 18 inches by 5 inches I think it was um, and then down here you got the charging port which is a different style of charging uh, cable and a very light charger with 1.8 amps of output and then you have come in here you have the really slickly integrated kickstand that is easy to hit with your foot uh, the one thing to note is it's got a little bit of a metal point on the bottom and i've had it actually had it scratch my floors a little bit um, one of the claims for them they, so it has seven and a half inch solid honeycomb tires you can see that whole pattern through there and if i can hold it up it actually looks pretty neat at certain angles where you actually can see the you can see air through there, so that's kind of a nice little feature. Um, it's supposed to equal suspension, as, and as I'll show when we ride, uh, it, it doesn't quite do that. Back here we got the rear uh, manual scuffer brake. Uh, this one, it, it doesn't do a great job. There's no roughing texture under the back. Um, I haven't really, I didn't test the braking with this because I, I wasn't very confident in its eff effectiveness. Come over here to the very simple and elegant folding mechanism that they have on this. Um, you have to relieve the pressure slightly on the stem, that pushes down, this locks into place at which point this is all then locked and, and because of this taper um, right kind of at the balance point it's really easy to carry because of the diameter here of course knowing that those handlebars do not fold down so that becomes that's your minimum width when this is folded or unfolded or your maximum width excuse me and these handlebars are a little over 16 inches wide so we got Dual motors, you can kind of see the solid interior of the rim. 250 watt motors, front and rear, engaged in dual mode, uh, mode which I'll show you in a second on the display. Uh, they have it rated as 500 watts peak output for, per wheel uh, with 16 newton meters of torque, so 32 newton meters of torque uh, total. Coming up to the display here. Very nicely, the rubberized, uh, the rubberized sections on this scooter are pretty nice. Like the, everything feels good, um, and there's you know kind of the rubber texture on here. You power on the scooter by holding this for a couple seconds. This single tap turns. I don't know if you can see that indicator right there. When that is on, that means dual motor mode is engaged and disengaged. Single tap turns on the front light there. Horn over here with brake mode selector to go through between trip odometer and miles and then you hold it to zero out the trip and then to a quick tap to switch between speed limitation mode and i'll show you what the speeds are doing on those and the throttle over here um, this scooter is only kick start so you have to be kicking to get it to go uh, as you probably saw in my other video perhaps you did uh, this is the only assembly required is screwing this part of the handlebar onto the rest of the scooter. When the scooter is on, you do get this nice brake light illumination. And I'll put a little bit of a lighting test in here. Um, and then in, when you, you get a nice uh, strobe pattern when you hit the brake. 
and I'll put a little bit of uh, some footage that I shot uh, night riding on this scooter right now. It does a decent job illumination with illumination, uh, but knowing if you really need to see, you're gonna, probably going to want to add more directable lights. Just want to show the bottom really quickly because it's nice as the top is and the finish is really i mean the paint's really nice this has been kind of dropped a few times so this is carbon fiber some plastic and i think uh, according to the website most of this is aluminum so you have 300 and let me look at my cheat sheet here 302 watt hours of sony cells here in the deck uh, that gives you what they say is a 15 mile 15 and a half mile range. As I'm writing, I'm gonna talk about more about the range. Uh, my range results were a lot lower than that. 275 pound weight limit on the scooter. And this is version three of the scooter. Just so you know, that is the newest version at the time of this review. And deck clearance is three inches and the top, the height of the deck is four and a half inches, which in my experience is like this under five inch deck height makes it uh, practical to kick along, which I, I do like. So I'm going to show you the bottom and then we're going to get out and ride. So you see here it has the serial number and what have you, but the one thing I find is interesting is that is, as nice as the top of the scooter is, the bottom of the scooter is a little, it was kind of a little bit of an afterthought, it looks to me. Like I'm surprised it's just a black solid uh, setup. Uh, there is an IP54 water resistance rating with this scooter. And so you have like nice grommeting uh, at all the entry points. From a fit and finish perspective, this scooter is, is really top notch. Um, when I, I'm gonna show here because it's harder to show when we're riding is the handlebar mechanism. I have it as tight as it can be and still function. But you can see here, I have it really, I, I did some extra tightening. You can see there's still, hopefully you can see that quite a bit of play up in here, um, just, just to be aware of. All right, so let's go ride. All right, we're here out in front of my house. Do a little ride around the neighborhood where I know it's safe to do so right now. Um, and I don't know how the, this display uh, is a little compromised once you get into bright sun, as I'm gonna show you right here. It's a bit hard to see with the glare, uh, but you get the five bar battery indicator and the speed mode there. Um, it is in miles per hour, and I did unlock the speed, just so you know, which I can't remember the exact combination. I'll put it in the description. You hold the button, and I think you press this one 10 times, and you get an audible beep, and that lets you know that you have unlocked it. And so my top speed prior to that, I was getting between 15 and 16 miles per hour, which is about what they're advertising. Um, after that point, yeah, 18.8 miles per hour, and my average range was only 7.7 .7 miles. Um, some of the interesting dimensions up from the deck, you get 38 inches, which is a pretty comfortable height. Um, taller riders might find it inconvenient, and you got 16 and a quarter inch wide handlebars which is a little bit on the narrow side and because of the way the 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 controls are um, with the suspense, suspension as you'll see um, you kind of have to be riding like this and it kind of compromises your ability to hang on very well so we're going to start out here in speed limit one single motor mode um, in my acceleration testing which you'll, i'll show some clips from in single motor mode I got the slowest 0 to 100 feet I've, I've recorded to date. So here we are in about 10 miles per hour on the display. Uh, so the thing I've really noticed between dual motor mode and single motor mode is the top speed isn't greatly different. Um, what really changes the acceleration, like I just said, single motor mode, this was the slowest scooter I've tested to date, and in dual motor mode it was the second fastest. So quite a, quite a juxtaposition there. So we're in, in assist level uh, speed limit two. Uh, so we're getting more in the uh, range of 12 to 13 miles per hour and you'll see the GPS on the screen here. And then getting into level three, even here in single motor mode, we're still getting 
a top speed that's pretty good. But in this neighborhood streets, you're probably seeing or sensing the how rough of a ride this is. And it just, uh, you, you, can, you feel pretty much everything. It's, the, the cushioning on these tires is not nearly as good as a, a pneumatic tire. And it, what I found is riding at about this 10 mile per hour speed range right here, kind of makes it the most comfortable. And that makes it, you know, it kind of lessens the, the super impact of some of these bumps. So one thing is the uh, braking is very nice and controlled, very metered. Um, you can see there it's strong. Um, I did testing in both the dual motor and single motor mode. Uh, Unagi says that this will stop the scooter in 13 feet. At 15 miles per hour, it took me about double that to stop uh, with a slightly better performance in dual motor mode, as you'll see on the screen. So I'm gonna switch here into dual motor mode. See if it's too, too, and you see how it's a little bit difficult to do those changes as you're going here. So I'm back to the speed limit one. And so pretty much the same speed limit, right? Makes sense. Um, I don't know if you'll notice that, but one of the things that's a little frustrating about the way the electronics work on this is when it's hovering around the speed limit, it goes a little faster and then it breaks slightly and then pulls you back. So there's a little bit of a back and forth, back and forth uh, when you are, when you're at the top of the speed limitation, not in level three, I don't know just that as much. Jumping up here to level two, you'll see that boot burst from nine to 10 miles per hour. We're gonna stop here at the stop sign like a good citizen. So you, you can probably feel that that takeoff is pretty significant. Uh, one thing I'm gonna show you that I came across recently is, so here I am in speed limit one. If I was wanting to kick above the speed limit, it actually, I'm not sure how well that's gonna come through or just be really dizzying on the camera, uh, but it actually breaks. Uh, so it doesn't allow you to kick above the speed limitation. It actually, applies the electronic brake, which I find is kind of a weakness. So like I said, uh, this tested the second fastest um, just under the eMove Cruiser on zero to 100 feet uh, acceleration. I'm gonna kind of show you that. Of course it does do a little, require a kickstart, but uh, so I like, if I'm doing fast acceleration, I will hold down this and then go and you're gonna hear the front wheel actually spin a little bit because it just, it puts out a lot of torque. And uh, you know, one of the things about this, I mean, I mean, this is things really cruising. Now on a smooth pass of, pat, patch of uh, street like that, it's, it's not too bad at this speed. Uh, I'm gonna turn on this street up here and you're gonna see that that comfort level is gonna be significantly compromised when we go over some less than ideal. Uh, you'll probably hear my voice and it's just, you know, the, the road vibration is coming through really strongly. Um, and and the, the stability is a little compromised. Now, all that strong acceleration is really due to, in my opinion, the smaller diameter wheels. Uh, you get a lot of effective torque to the ground and the smaller diameter tires seem to be, in my testing, some of the fastest, in, especially in this medium amount of output motors. The, the smoothness of the power and braking are top notch. I mean, it really, it really feels good. Like you, there's no abrupt, it just, it's easy to understand. And even though the braking is strong, um, it's not as, it, you know, the braking performance is a lot better than most other dual motor. I mean, electronic braking only scooters. One thing that's interesting is, so I'm under power. I'm hitting the scuffer brake right now uh, the scuffer brake does not disengage the motor. There is no motor inhibitor connection there. So I'm gonna cross kind of a busier street here. You can see how this does around this kind of stuff. So 
So I'm going to talk briefly right now on my range testing, which is one of the things that I I spent more time doing on this. Oh boy, this! Oh Lord, have mercy, that's really rough. Profanity. Oh boy. Um, mostly because of my first range test, first and second range test results were so perplexing. So my first range test uh, in dual motor mode. I got a range of 7.8 miles, and that was basically to dead. Like I, I'll put the recharge, all that data on the screen. Uh, once you get to the uh, the one battery remaining, it turns red, and it starts giving you a lot of audible indications. It beeps once and then twice, and it keeps beeping a little bit louder and a little quicker, a little more beeps. Uh, just just so you know, you're uh, you're kind of using it up. But then, uh, so I was like, okay, well, do, dual motor mode, let's, let's try single motor mode. So I, the second range test I did in single motor mode, and my range was 7.7 .7 miles. And I just, it kind of blew me away. I, it did take a little bit less to recharge. I didn't pull the battery down quite as far, but I still got it pretty low. And uh, efficiency wise, it wasn't greatly different. So I'm getting efficiencies like 25 watt hours per mile, which is not awesome. Like I was alluding to, those two perplexing results had me do a range test with my, with my son Milo riding, and he weighs 135 pounds, and he got, it's either 9.3 or 9.6 miles, and I'll put that on the screen as well, a little video of his range test, uh, which is really surprising. This is still well below the advertised range for the scooter. Uh, then I finally did my last one, which I decided to mimic more like how you would ride, which is in multiple short, you know, for this scooter, this is really designed for multiple short jaunts, you know, last mile solution. So I, I rode over the course of three days, one ride, at, and I'll show you, one ride was four miles and the other two were just under two. And so I got a total of 8.22 miles. Um, and that was, that was again, I started getting the indications that it was running out of battery. And then I, st I still, and I did that in dual motor mode, but mode two, trying to go between 10 and 12 miles per hour most of the time. And I still got a range of, you know, well under nine miles spread over the course of a couple days. Um, it takes about four hours for this battery to recharge with that 1.8 amp output charger, though it is very light charger at only 1.7 pounds. So it'd be easy enough and small enough to throw in your backpack. Looking at the watt hours used, it looks like this, this scooter is protecting itself. So you're only getting 80% of the output of the battery available. So it's really protecting itself so you're not gonna overstrain the battery. Last thing I did is I did a hill climb and I do the same hill I typically do, which is a little over 300 feet long. Uh, it peaks out at a 12 to 14 degree slope. And in single motor mode, this made it about halfway up the hill in 25 or so seconds. But in dual motor mode, it zipped right up the hill. It made it in uh, just under 20 seconds, one of the faster times up this hill. And it, you know, so it's the hill climbing, uh, wow, they say 15 difference. degree hills. Uh, I have no doubt that this will climb that steep of a hill. You can see here we've uh, run, we've ran just a little over two miles, and that's another interesting thing when you're kicking off on this scooter, because the the stem is very upright. Uh, you kind of run into the stem, and you have to kick to make it go. Um, and then you know for longer rides, like when I was doing the range test, even at seven miles, the vibration starts to wear on your feet a bit. And be, being able to not really reposition your feet um, does start to take a toll. The tires, while a nice idea, don't really increase the comfort significantly. Um, the, the looks are, of course, subjective, but I think really nice. And then uh, speed-wise, it's awesome, but it's unless you have a really smooth surface you can't really take advantage of that speed and you can't take advantage of it for very long the difference between 
the lack of difference between range and dual and single motor mode, I can only attribute to something in the programming perhaps. The Unagi D Model 1, like really good looking scooter, $990, a good last mile solution. Um, it, particularly if you like the looks, it's really focused on its aesthetic, I think. Um, and it looks, it looks sharp. I mean, it's, but you, you have to know about the limitation on its range and its comfort. If you need a cruise from your car to a meeting, from your office to another, if, like those kind of things, I think it really makes sense. Um, assuming you're aware of the price tag. I hope this uh, look at my detailed data I typically collect helps you out. If you, you know, if you like the comment, if, it, if this video helps you out, go ahead and leave it a thumbs up if you don't mind. And if you want to subscribe and be notified about when I'm doing more videos, uh, that'd be great. It helps me out. And if you do decide you want to give it a thumbs down, maybe give me a heads up why. Yeah, I like to learn to improve unless you like just don't like my face, which, all right. But anyway, thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. Hey, how's it going? It's Jim. And bam! You know, this should popular scout. Yeah. Grunt transition. I'm gonna go talk to my chickens. Yeah. Oh, no way. It's pretty neat. Catch the wave. Feel the wave.